Oh god, this is... Hey everyone, Henry Yellow here, welcome back. Right now we are going to watch Network from 1976, directed by Sidney Lumet. Now this movie is supposed to be a satire, and I can't be sure that I will understand the satire behind the movie. I guess I'll find out, but I will treat it as if I'm watching a drama movie. But if there's anything that goes over my head, well, I hope that you guys can perhaps help me clarify it in the comments. So thanks in advance. Now let's watch a network. This story is about Howard Beale, who was the network news anchorman on UBS TV. The following year, his wife died, and he was left a childless widower with an 8 rating and a 12 share. He was fired, effective in two weeks. Hmm. <laughs> and nobody told me! I throw my raincoat over my vagina, I run down the bed, and I say to the cabbie, take me to the middle of the George Washington Bridge. Ah! He says, don't do it, buddy. I'm going to kill myself. Oh, <laughs> shit, Howard. Don't do it, buddy. A hell of a rating, I guarantee you that. <laughs> What's the point when he's dead? We can make a series out of it. Suicide of the Week. Great Sunday night show for the whole family. No, not for the whole family. Ten seconds on the shooting itself. The whole thing is 125. Where does that come out? Yeah, that's a lot of planning, a lot of work. Gotta time everything properly. Q Howard. Ladies and gentlemen, I will be retiring from this program in two weeks' time. I have decided to kill myself. So what she said. I'm going to blow my brains out right on this program a week from today. Ten seconds to commercial. So is no one freaking listening? Wait, no one was even paying attention. Howard just said he was going to blow his brains out next Tuesday. Yeah. What are you talking about? Howard just said he was going to kill himself next Tuesday. What do you mean Howard just said he was going to kill himself next Tuesday? Exactly what she said. What the fuck's going on, Howard? They want to know what the fuck is going on, Howard. I can't hear you. Get him off. What's the matter with you? You've got to stand by. This is my favorite Video difficulties. Mr. Oh, Beale has been under great professional and personal strain. But I've got some goddamn surprises for you, dude. I've had it up to here with your credit division and its annual $33 million deficit. I mean, he is under great stress. His wife died, got bad ratings, he got fired. What we're going to see now is something really sensational. The Bank of Arizona was ripped off last week by the Ecumenical Liberation Army, and they themselves actually took movies of the ripoff while they were ripping it off. When you see it. They actually shot this film while they were ripping off the bank. Where? Where did you see it? Well, <laughs> recording their own robbery. Well, they're going to be identified and arrested easily. Listen, Max, I'd like another shot. Oh, come on, Howard. I'd just like to... Come on, make some brief farewell statement. I just don't want to go out like a clown. You want to go out with a bang. <coughs> Chinatown was so sad that I still feel a little sad when I see Faye Dunaway. I think we can get a hell of a movie of the week out of it, maybe even a series. The hobgoblin radicals call the Ecumenical Liberation Army who go around taking home movies of themselves robbing banks. Maybe they'll take movies of themselves kidnapping heiresses, bombing bridges, assassinating ambassadors. So what, do you want to employ them? We'd open each week's segment with that authentic footage, write some story behind that footage, and we've got ourselves a series. Are they hoping they'll rob banks every week? Assassinate every week? The American people are turning sullen. They've been clobbered on all sides by Vietnam, Watergate, the inflation, the depression. The American people want somebody to articulate their rage for them. I don't want conventional programming on this network. I want counterculture. I want anti-establishment. Really? Should you really show these things though? You can, but should you? The division producing the lowest rate of return has been the news division. The news division would be reduced from an independent division to a department accountable to network. God damn it, I spoke to John Wheeler this morning and he assured me that the news division was safe. We'll talk about this tomorrow at our regular morning meeting. Yesterday I announced on this program that I was going to commit public suicide. I just ran out of bullshit. All right, cut him off. Leave him on. Yeah, Max has had enough too. All this pointless pain, humiliation, and decay, so there better be someone somewhere who does know. That's the god bullshit. He's saying that life is like bullshit, and it is. So what are you screaming about? 
The way I hear it, Max, you are primarily responsible for this colossally stupid prank. I took this job with your personal assurance that you'd back my autonomy against any encroachment. The reorganization of the news division would not be executed until everyone, specifically you, Max, had been consulted and satisfied. I will expect your resignation at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, and we will coordinate our statements to the least detriment of everyone. These are those four outlines submitted by Universal for an hour series. The running characters are a crusty but benign ex-Supreme Court justice, beautiful girl graduate student, and the local district attorney who is brilliant and sometimes cuts corner. Next one. The crusty but benign police lieutenant who's always getting heat from the commissioner. Beautiful young girl cop who's fighting the feminist battle. A crusty but benign managing <laughs> editor who's always getting... You know, Barbara, Howard Veal went on the air and yelled bullshit for two minutes, and I can tell you right now that tonight's show will get a 30 share at least. I think we've lucked into something. It's all about results. Don't care about the process. That dumb show jumped five rating points in one night. Tonight's show has got to be at least 15. He's tired of all the bullshit. He's articulating the popular rage. I see Howard Beale as a latter-day prophet, a magnificent messianic figure inveighing against the hypocrisies of our time. Do you want to figure out the revenues of a strip show that sells for 100,000 bucks a minute? One show like that could pull this whole network right out of the hole now, Frank. It's being handed to us on a plate. Let's not blow it. For God's sakes, Diana, we're talking about putting a manifestly irresponsible man on national television. It's all about the ratings and the shares. You can't be seriously proposing putting on a pornographic network news show. The FCC would kill us. The FCC can't do anything except wrap our knuckles. The affiliates won't carry it. Affiliates will kiss your ass if you can hand them a hit show. This violates every canon of respectable broadcasting. We're not a respectable network. We're a whorehouse network, and we have to take whatever we can get. Yep. It's that bad. I grab my raincoat, I run downstairs, I run out in the street, and the driver turns around and he says, Don't do it, buddy. Don't do it. No, if you think that's funny, when do you hear this? They want Howard to go back on and yell bullshit. <laughs> A latter-day prophet denouncing the hypocrisies of our times. And what's wrong with being an angry prophet denouncing the hypocrisies of our times? Do you want to be an angry prophet denouncing the hypocrisies of our times? I'd like to be an angry prophet denouncing the hypocrisies of our times. <laughs> I think Hackett's overstepped himself. I think he's making a serious mistake with this Beale business. So I'm going to let Hackett have his head for a while. He just might lose it over this Beale business. I'd like you to stay on, Max. Mm. The initial response to the new Howard Beale show was not auspicatory, clearly suggesting the novelty was wearing off. Did you know there are a number of psychics working as licensed brokers on Wall Street? They're all pretty successful, even in a bear market and selling short. Wow. I just had a fleeting vision of you in an office with a craggy middle-aged man with whom you are or will be emotionally involved. And here I am. Wow. And here's somebody who can predict tomorrow's news for you. Her name, aptly enough, is Sybil. Sybil the soothsayer. Give her two minutes of trance at the end of a Howard Beale show and she could oraculate. Oraculate. Maybe she could do the weather. <laughs> yeah. I see you don't fancy my suggestions. <laughs> well, you're not serious, are you? I could make your Beale show the highest rated news show in television if you'd let me have a crack at it. God, you are serious. You should be in entertainment, not news. I was hoping that you were looking for an emotional involvement with a craggy, middle-aged man. Oh, I wouldn't rule that out entirely. You came all the way down here just to pitch a couple of loony showbiz ideas when you knew goddamn well I'd laugh you right out of the office. You don't know until you try. Sooner or later, with or without you, I'm going to take over your network news show, and I figured I might as well start tonight. What are you doing for dinner tonight? I can't make it tonight, love. Call me tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Son of a bitch, I get a feeling I'm being made. You are. You are. I don't do anything on that first date. We'll see. <laughs> She's pretty confident. I was married for four years. I pretended to be happy. My husband ran off with his boyfriend <laughs> when I had an affair with my adults. He oh. told me I was the worst lady he'd ever had. Arouse quickly, consummate prematurely, and can't wait to get my clothes back on and get out of that bedroom. Uh -huh. All I want out of life is a 30 share and a 20 rating. Is your wife in town? Yes. Well, then we better go to my place. Well, she's direct. Yes. 
I hear you. Is he going insane? Why me? He's really becoming a prophet. He's receiving the word from up above. And the voice said to me, I want you to tell the people the truth. Not an easy thing to do because the people don't want to know the truth. For God's sake, I'm not Moses. And the voice said to me, and I'm not God. What has that got to do with it? Why me? Because you're on television, dummy. Howard, I'm taking you off the air. I think you're having a breakdown. Mental breakdown? Nervous breakdown? It's not a psychotic episode. That's what a crazy person would say. I'm imbued with some special spirit. It's a shocking eruption of great electrical energy, as if suddenly I'd been plugged into some great electromagnetic field. I feel connected to all living things. He's one with everything. And you will not take me off the air for now or for any other spaceless time. Oh, boy. Oh, he's having a stroke. Is he OK? He's just fainted. Living room on the Putting on his raincoat over his pajamas. Is he gonna call a taxi and go to the middle of the Washington Bridge? What do you mean you don't know where he is? The son of a bitch is a hit, goddammit! Over 2,000 phone calls! The response is sensational! The response is sensational! We got a goddamn hit, goddammit! Diner showing the times. He needs care and treatment. And all you grave robbers think about is that he's a hit! The audience out there obviously wants a prophet, even a manufactured one, even if he's as mad as Moses. Howard Beale is processed instant god. Instant God. I am not putting Howard back on the air. It's not your show anymore, Max. It's mine. Mr. Ruddy has had a mild heart attack and is not taking calls. In his absence, I'm making all network decisions. You're fired. Whoa. She really took it over. It's a big, fat, big titted hit, and I don't have to waffle around with Ruddy anymore. Do you think Ruddy is stupid enough to go to the CCA board and say, I'm taking a one hit show off the air? Mr. Jensen's gonna be sitting there rocking back and forth in his little chair and he's gonna say, that's very good, Frank. Keep it up. You go along with this? Of course. I'll go to court. I'll put him in a hospital before I'll let you exploit him like a carnival freak. I'm gonna make a lot of noise about this. Great. We need all the press we can get. There's no bad publicity. It's all about the ratings and the shares. Nothing else matters. It's a depression. Everybody's out of work or scared of losing their job. The dollar buys a nickel's worth. Some local newscaster tells us that today we had 15 homicides and 63 violent crimes, as if that's the way it's supposed to be. We sit in the house and slowly the world we're living in is getting smaller and all we say is, please, at least leave us alone in our living room. Well, I'm not going to leave you alone. I want you to get mad. You've got to say, I'm a human being. God damn it. My life has value. I want you to get up right now. Get up, Stay with go to your windows, open them, and stick your head out and yell, I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore. They're yelling in Baton Rouge. God damn it. Dang, he's a celebrity. Son of a bitch! We struck the mother low! I'm mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore! Yeah, because some people really can't take it anymore. They just need to let it out. And Howard Beale... It was spitting facts. Sometimes you just gotta scream it out. And he's giving them that release, encouraging them to just release it. Isn't it such a coincidence that there's thunder and rain going on right now? It's like everybody's contributing that spark, joining in on this electromagnetic field. And each tiny little spark eventually creates a storm. In the Nielsen ratings, the Howard Beale show was listed as the fourth highest rated show of the month. I want a lot more film like the bank ripoff the ecumenical sent in. Each week, we open with an authentic act of political terrorism taken on the spot and in the actual moment. You've got to get the ecumenicals to bring in that film footage for us. We would not want to produce a television show celebrating historically deviational terrorism. I'm offering you an hour of primetime television every week into which you can stick whatever propaganda you want. It's dangerous. It's a lot better than handing out uh, mimeograph pamphlets on ghetto street corners. I'd better check it out with the great Ahmed Khan. All she cares about are the views. That's all Diana cares about. Like, you can stick whatever propaganda, whatever crap. Whatever bad negative stuff, you just stick it up there. We just want the views. And that is dangerous. That's bad. Not that it won't bring in the views, but from a 
more moral standpoint. Well, Ahmed, you ain't gonna believe this. But I'm gonna make a TV star out of you. And she wants a terrorist act every week. That's crazy. She's promoting it. Diana is indirectly promoting terrorist actions. Network News Hour with Sybil the Soothsayer. They got Sybil the Soothsayer on. <laughs> they really got her on the show. Edward George Ruddy died today of a heart condition and woe is us. We're in a lot of trouble. Mr. Ruddy died. Less than 3% of you people read books. Less than 15% of you read newspapers. The only truth you know is what you get over this tube. An entire generation that never knew anything that didn't come out of this tube. This tube can make or break presidents, popes, prime ministers, and woe is us if it ever falls into the hands of the wrong people. The most awesome goddamn propaganda force in the whole godless world. Who knows what shit will be peddled for truth on this network? Facts. Television is not the truth. Right. Television is a goddamn amusement park. So if you want the truth, go to God. Go to yourselves. That's the only place you're ever going to find any real truth. We deal in illusions, man. None of it is true. But you people sit there day after day, night after night. You're beginning to think that the tube is reality and that your own lives are unreal. You do whatever the tube tells you. You people are the real thing. We are the illusion. Turn off your television sets. Turn them off now. Hmm. Turn them off! <laughs> okay, and every an applause. Wow. I mean, he is. He spoke a lot of truth. An increase in projected initial programming revenues in the amount of twenty-one million dollars due to the phenomenal success of the Howard Beale Show, Mr. Jensen. Very good, Frank. Exemplary. Keep it up. That's exactly what he expected him to say. It's all profit, profit, profit. Buy you a cup of coffee? I've thought many times of calling you. I wish you had. All I know is I can't get you out of my mind. What about your wife, Max? Your wife? That Mount Zitung hour is turning into one big pain in the ass. We're having heavy legal problems with the federal government right now. Yeah, I don't doubt that. We're getting around the FBI by doing this show in collaboration with the news division. We're standing on the First Amendment, freedom of the press, and the right to protect our sources. Using the loopholes. We're paying these nuts 10,000 bucks a week to turn in authentic film footage of the revolutionary activities and that can constitute inducement to commit a crime. It absolutely can. You're absolutely encouraging them to commit more acts. It's pretty crazy, honestly. How long has it been going on? A month. Do you love her? I don't know how I feel. I'm grateful I can feel anything. What, what does that mean? 25 years of building a home and raising a family and all the senseless pain we have inflicted on each other. I'm damned if I'm going to stand here and have you tell me you're in love with somebody else. Oh, this is your great winter romance, isn't it? Your last roar of passion before you settle into your emeritus years. Is that what's left for me? I'm your wife, damn it! If you can't work up a winter passion for me, the least I require is respect and allegiance. I'm on her side. <laughs> I hurt badly. Does she love you, Max? Probably not. I'm not sure she's capable of any real feelings. She learned life from Bugs Bunny. <laughs> she's very carefully devised a number of scenarios for all of us to play. All of her plot outlines have me leaving her and coming back to you because the audience won't buy a rejection of the happy American family. <laughs> a life playing out like a movie, huh? The Mao Tse Tung Hour went on the air March 14th. It received a 47 share. They're seriously holding their meeting here now. <laughs> oh, goodness. I'm making a lousy two fifteen per segment. I'm already deficiting twenty five grand a week with Metro, and I'm giving this turkey ten thousand per segment, another five for this fruitcake. And I sure as shit ain't cutting them into my distribution charges. You fucking fascist! <laughs> that guy's questioning his life. What's happening there was crazy. You all know that she is the woman behind the Howard Beale Show. Show in television. Yeah. Last year we were the number four 
network next year. We're number one. I don't think Howard's gonna last very long. But now somebody's buying up CCA. I will tell you who they're buying CCA for. They are buying it for the Arabs. The Arabs control sixteen billion dollars in this country. They own big hunks of the Atlanta Hilton, the Arizona Land and Cattle Company. It makes you wonder where Howard gets his intel. All of those Arab petrol dollars are washed through Switzerland and Canada and the biggest banks in this country. Right now, the Arabs have screwed us out of enough American dollars with our own money by General Motors, IBM, ITT. There's only one thing that can stop them. You. I want you to send a telegram to the White House. I want them wading knee-deep in telegrams at the White House. I don't want the banks selling my country to the Arabs. I want the CCA deal Stop now! For this whole CCA deal with the Saudis, you know a lot more about that, Frank, than I would. Is it true? So how does Howard know? CCA has two billions in loans with the Saudis. We need that Saudi money bad. Disaster. This show is a disaster. Hey, it couldn't have lasted forever. And our people in the White House report they were already knee-deep in telegrams. The SEC could hold this deal up for 20 years if they wanted to. Clarence McElhaney's gonna tell me Mr. Jensen wants me in his office tomorrow morning so he can personally chop my head off. He may be unhappy, but he isn't stupid enough to withdraw the number one show in television out of peak. Two billion dollars isn't peak! That's the wrath of God! And the wrath of God wants Howard Field fired! I'm gonna impale the son of a bitch with a sharp Roughly stick through the heart! I'll that's strangle that's him with a sash cord! They're each having their own monologue. Mr. Jensen wants to meet Howard Beale personally. The farewell revelation is at hand. I have seen the shattering falterations of ultimate clarity. It's a nice place to yell. It's very echoey. You have meddled with the primal forces of nature, Mr. Bill. The Arabs have taken billions of dollars out of this country, and now they must put it back. It is ebb and flow, tidal gravity. It is ecological balance. There are nations. There are no peoples. There are no Russians. There is only one holistic system of systems. Multinational dominion of dollars. Petrodollars, electrodollars, multi-dollars, Reich marks. It is the international system of currency which determines the totality of life on this planet. You have meddled with the primal forces of nature. You will atone. Am I getting through to you, Mr. Beale? Oh, shit. He's speaking his language. There is no America. There is no democracy. There is only IBM and ITT, Dow, Union Carbide. Those are the nations of the world today. We no longer live in a world of nations and ideologies, Mr. Beale. The world is a business, Mr. Beale. Perfect world. There's no war or famine, oppression or brutality. One vast and ecumenical holding company. All necessities provided, all anxieties. That's not going to happen. That'll never happen. And I have chosen you, Mr. Beale, to preach this evangel. Why me? Because you're on television, dummy. <laughs> Using his words back against him. That evening, Howard Beale went on the air to preach the corporate cosmology of Arthur Jensen. Arthur Jensen got through to him, got in his mind. It's the single solitary human being that's finished. Because this is no longer a nation of independent individuals. The whole world is becoming humanoid, creatures that look human but aren't. The whole world's people are becoming mass-produced, programmed, numbered, insensate things. Nobody particularly cared to hear his life was utterly valueless. I'm counting on you to talk some sense into the lunatic. Nobody wants to hear about dying democracy and dehumanization. I'm tired of all this hysteria about Howard Beale. And I'm tired of pretending to write this dumb book about my maverick days and the great early years of television. Nobody wants a dumb damn goddamn book about the early days of television. Maybe you can start a whole new career as an actor! <laughs> I feel lousy about the pain that I've caused my wife and my kids. All of those things that you think sentimental, my generation calls simple human decency. 
I'm beginning to get scared shitless. All of a sudden, it's closer to the end than it is the beginning. And death is suddenly a perceptible thing to me. I'm part of your life. I'm real. You can't switch to another station. What exactly is it you want me to do? I just want you to love me. I don't know how to do that. I was kind of expecting that answer, honestly. She doesn't know how to love. The Howard Beale show was down 11 points. Hysteria swept through the network. He's smallpox. He's typhoid. I don't want to follow his goddamn show. I went out at 8 o'clock spot. And NBC's got Little House on the Prairie. ABC's got that bionic woman. You gotta do something. When things go bad. No, 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 damn it. What about that terrific new messiah that ABC was supposed to have signed up as our competition for next year? That's him. His ass ending. Jesus, turn him off. His ass ending. We're not going to find a replacement for Howard Beale, so let's stop kidding ourselves. Fully fledged messiahs don't come in bunches. Yeah, it wasn't going to last forever. You should have known that. Nothing lasts forever. I think we should fire Howard. Arthur Jensen has taken a strong personal interest in the Howard Beale show. <laughs> of course, because Howard is speaking his philosophy. <laughs> Time has come to reevaluate our relationship, Max. I don't like the way this script of ours is turning out. It's turning into a seedy little drama. You like a home and kids, and that's beautiful, but I am incapable of any such commitment. You're not the worst fuck I've ever had. You don't cough or make death-like rattles. Matter of fact, you're rather serene in the sack. Why is it that a woman always thinks the most savage thing she can say to a man to impugn his coxmanship? <laughs> coxmanship. You're being docile as hell about this. Oh, hell, Diana, I knew it was over with us weeks ago. He expected it since the beginning. I'm more concerned about you. I figure a year, maybe two, before you crack up, jump out of your 14th floor office window. I don't want your pain. I don't need you, Mark! You now get out of me! Because I'm your last contact with human reality. I love you! Then don't leave me. It's too late, Diana. There's nothing left in you that I can live with. You're one of Howard's humanoids. Mm. If I stay with you, I'll be destroyed. Wow. You're television incarnate, Diana. Indifferent to suffering, insensitive to joy. All of life is reduced to the common rubble of banality. And everything you touch dies with you. And it's a happy ending. For who? Wayward husband comes to his senses. Heartless young woman left alone in her arctic desolation. Music up with a swell. Final commercial. Final commercial. Mr. Jensen thinks Howard Beale is bringing a very important message to the American people. He wants Howard Beale on the air, and he wants him kept on. I would describe his position on this as inflexible. More like concrete, rigid. Our AR report showed that it is Howard Beale that is the destructive force here. So what do we do about this Beale son of a bitch? Suppose we'll have to kill him. Wait, what? Did he just read my thoughts? I was thinking they'd probably have to kill him. What would you fellas say to an assassination? Oh, and they have people to do it too. I can get the Mao Zedong people to kill Beale for us. That's what I thought. It could be done right on camera, in the studio. Done right on camera. Crazy how things turned out, but can't say you didn't see it coming. Network News Hour with Sybil the Soothsayer. Do they have to do this every time? Can't they just have a pre recorded, you know, tape? <laughs> nope, there we go, taking action now. The audience didn't react at all. As he began this evening's broadcast, we never compromised. So why should we? <laughs> yeah, and the commercials and everything. Oh god, this is... This was the story of Howard Beale, a man who was killed because he had lousy ratings. Honestly, I do not know how to feel about this movie because it doesn't feel out of the realms of possibility. You know what I mean? Like, this could actually happen. Perhaps when the movie was released, uh, the movie was trying to send us a message that this is how media will eventually evolve into but of course they they made it like a satire kind of thing 
little do they know that it is very close to the truth. It's very close to predicting the future. I will say though that Howard's speech, you know, throughout the movie, he definitely is speaking some truth about media, human lives, society, and it's also quite ironic in that uh, one of the episodes there where Howard told them to just turn off their television and tell them that television and the media is controlling them, controlling how they think, influencing their thoughts, when he himself is in the media and he himself is on the television telling them these things. I do agree with uh, Howard's point that a lot of people nowadays are very heavily reliant on what they see and what they hear and what they read in the media and it's not always 100% true. That's why we need to be aware of the things we see really and the things we hear take it with a grain of salt, compare between, you know, a few different sources. The actors and actresses in this movie, I think they were great. You know, Robert Duvall, Faye Dunaway, Peter Finch, William Holden, like even Arthur Jensen, uh, played by Ned Beatty. Like, I think the actors did really good in this movie. And then there's the relationship between Max and Diana. Uh, to Diana, everything, well, life basically is a script. It's like a movie, a play, a drama. It wouldn't be too far from the truth to say that Diana has had her entire, uh, what do you say, maybe perspective or mindset or her entire view of the world be influenced so much by her work and media and these kind of things that she's incapable of feeling true love. She's incapable of really understanding the feelings inside of her. Overall, I would say that great actors and actresses and the movie has some very important messages that we should understand and be aware of about individuality, about the media, about the influence of media, and the things we hear from this media, which we allow into our minds. Wasn't there a quote uh, which says something like, we must always keep guard at the door to our minds, which means we must always be careful of the things that we allow into our minds and the things that we learn. Don't just come home every day and sit in front of the couch and then just watch TV aimlessly or without purpose. And all you do is just see this images flashing on TV, whatever is being said, you just take it in and leave your mind blank. Like that's not how it should be. If you wanted rest, you should get proper rest. And if you want to learn something or know something about the world, you know, go to the proper sources. Anyways, that's pretty much all I have to say about the movie. I, mean, I think the movie has some pretty deep messages, maybe some subtle messages too, which require some digesting. So how do you feel about this movie network when you first watched it? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the reaction and I will see you in the next video. Peace.